Welcome to ReConnect, our third Data Security and Management Summit since 2021. My name's Lynn Lucas, and I'm Chief Marketing Officer at Cohesity. This is no ordinary summit. It's about the two hottest topics out there right now, data and security. Now, data has been here from the time of the early books. And for thousands of years, going back all the way to Sun Tzu, people have been looking to steal data to gain business or political advantage. So what's different about now? Well, during the pandemic, ransomware as a service became a huge business and nation state actors started attacking organizations around the globe. So the bad guys are having a huge impact. Let's look at a few of just the recent big attacks that have been out there. The LA Unified School District, the second largest school district in the US, covering 710 square miles and over 640,000 students hit by ransomware. The National Health Service in the UK, where 111 emergency services were disabled after their service provider was attacked. And in Australia, Optus, one of the largest telecoms, where 4 million plus consumer records were compromised. No industry is immune, and no business, private or public, large or small, is safe. So at this point, unfortunately, it's a matter of when most will be hit by ransomware, not if they will be hit, which is why the idea of cyber resiliency is becoming so critical. So why raise all this? The idea is not fear-mongering. In fact, it's just the opposite. We need to take a data-centric security approach and to come together as a community to learn, bolster our defenses, and put in place best practices for cyber resiliency. So today in our summit, we're gonna bring you best practices from CISOs and IT leaders, insights from leading cybersecurity experts, and we'll be making some major announcements. Now, my legal counsel wants me to take a moment and bring to your attention our forward-looking statement disclaimer. And if you're watching us live on one of our social media channels, whether Twitter, LinkedIn, or YouTube, please join the conversation using the hashtag Cohesity Reconnect. We'd love to hear from you and we'll be monitoring for all your questions that come in during the live st stream. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm pleased to bring on Sanjay Poonin, Cohesity's CEO and president. Welcome Sanjay. Thank you, Lynn, and welcome everybody. Sanjay Poonin here, CEO of Cohesity. I'm delighted to be at this ReConnect con conference and talk to you about how we plan to be leading the next era in data security and management. First, I want to reflect a little bit on my first 100 days. I'm delighted to be at this wonderful company, Cohesity. Uh, I think, you know, when I look at our employees, I always believe that employees are the starting point of engagement. They are the lifeblood of the company. I've had a delightful time getting to know many among the 2,500 our company, and I think that we have got the best talent that I'm seeking to not just retain, but we're recruiting some great talent from within the industry. I'm delighted to see uh, this continue to grow from the standpoint of our best employees here. It always starts with the product. I believe we've got the best product in the industry. A customer told me he hadn't seen tech like this since VMware 20 years ago and Amazon 10 years ago, and I've, you know, he told me that before I joined, and I believe that's still the case. And we're gonna build our product to be 10X better than anybody else in our category, both today and going into the future. Customers, customer feedback, the net promoter score that I've seen from our customers is the best in our category. The TCO and ROI, which are the, the core metrics of business value, are incredible when I ask customers what impact they're seeing from this. And the aspirations, when we talk to our customer advisory board of where they wanna see us go is profound. But it's not just customers, it's partners. Ecosystems need to be a force multiplier today and going forward in the future. Whether it's the server storage networking players uh, like HP or Cisco that are investors in us, but we also partner with Dell and NetApp and Lenovo and Pure Storage, or the cloud players. Amazon's an investor in our company. Uh, we also work with Microsoft and Google. Uh, and then the SIs, the VARs, uh, the security ecosystem, we're delighted by all of them. 
What I'm excited about when I think about this company is the customer base, the success we've had with them, the partners, 3,500 customers, uh, some of the best of the best logos, uh, you know, four of the top 10 among the Fortune 500, 40% plus of the Fortune 100, uh, five of the top U.S. banks, 430 of the global uh, financial services institutions, 185 plus federal agencies. We're having tremendous success in healthcare, hospitals, and or medical record systems. 1,500 plus partners, and that 90 plus NPS score, which is the best in the industry. This incredible list of customer and partners is what I'm, I believe we can take more and more to 10x that number in years to come. I'm also excited by our executive team. We want you to be able to look at our executive team, benchmark that against the others in our peer group and say that's the best executive team. And our board, we're delighted by the support they provide us, uh, not just as an investors in the company, but some of them also incredibly talented independent board members. The latest addition is Kevin Mandia, um, who has been one of the best cyber fighters in the industry. They have many places many of these board members can decide to join. We're delighted that they picked Cohisti. We're also excited about some of the new members who've joined our executive team. Uh, in recent uh, uh, weeks and months. Karen Egan used to work for me at VMware. She runs our customer support and experience team. Uh, Amit Nair used to be at Microsoft and HashiCorp. He's now the GM of our cloud business unit. When you think about the opportunity that, this, that we see at this company, the challenge you have is that every 11 seconds there's ransomware. Uh, it takes you often 270 days to recover from that. A lot of the data is in external systems, public, you know, and you don't even know about half of the data. Two thirds of the time that data is not even used appropriately. And problems that you have is that in this landscape, data is too vulnerable to breaches. The management of that data is too complex. It's not intelligence, it's closed. And there has not been a unified platform, we believe to date, for data security and management that could bring together these solution segments of data protection, data security, data mobility, data access and data insights. And that's what we believe we have done. So what we've built at Cohesity is the best data security and management platform. We call it the Cohesity Data Cloud because it can run in a private cloud or a public cloud. It has five solution areas in them, data protection, data security, data mobility, data access, and data insights. And each of these five have some rich capabilities. Where we started off was data protection. That's classic backup. Uh, mass restore, archivals, resilience, uh, where we have focused in data security over the last several months and, and year or so is cyber vaulting with the best cyber vault, Fort Knox that won the best product at VMworld recently, but you're going to hear us uh, introducing uh, threat hunting and, and classification of data, intelligent classification of data, and world-class integration into SOC in this conference, security operations control centers our data mobility capabilities with products and capabilities like site continuity, to our files and objects capabilities and much more in data access where we were ranked recently a visionary by Gartner, uh, to even something like search. Uh, you know, most often search and analytics for many products in the backup, cat backup category is tough because they can't do it at all uh, or it takes too long. You've got to rehydrate the data and then searching on that or much less even getting to analytics and e-discovery. Because of our architecture, we're able to make that much simpler for something like search or eventually e-discovery. Why do customers typically tell us we stand out or we win? We like to call the number one reason Google scale and Apple simplicity. Uh, we want to be the best product that scales so that you can run something 10x faster, often significantly cheaper in total cost of ownership. We have built z security into the platform, zero trust security from role-based access controls to multi-factor authentication to encryption, all that built in from the get-go, but we're also now adding many security capabilities that you're going to hear during uh, this video conference. Uh, we're also you know, doing a lot in terms of building AI and ML into the platform in every way we can, whether it's in that threat hunting capability, entropy of data, self-healing, automating tickets, for example, in ITSM, systems, all of that is AI and ML systems uh, at work for you. We built the platform to be API extensible, which means that if we have capabilities we want to extend, for example, search, we are able to do it very easily with our own APIs. But third-party products uh, could easily extend what we're doing. And then my goal is to ensure that collectively we bring to you, when you look at our, our executive team, 
all the way down to the engineers and, and sales reps, the best team in the industry with the highest customer NPS. One aspect of this that's just been remarkable to me is the cost of ownership, TCO and ROI that I hear from customers. These, the TCO and ROI is typically two sides of the same coin called business value. When I talk to customers and say, what was your life before and after Cohesity and TCO? It's almost like a weight loss commercial. They tell me they had a bunch of expensive hardware, paid for some software, and then a lot of labor to put it together. Because we're software defined, the software still has some value, good value to it. Uh, we're priced for value, but the hardware is dramatically lower. You can do it with commodity hardware servers or partners like HP or Dell or, or, or Lenovo or Cisco servers. And the labor, because it's so simple and easy to both set up and maintain, is dramatically lower. So this picture is just illustratively what we hear from almost every customer. Sometimes customers tell us it's even more dramatic than that. ROI acceleration is also dramatic. One example I, I give here, Legacy Restores, could have taken 45 minutes. With Cohesity, it's four minutes. Sometimes I hear processes that used to take a week now take an hour. And all of these are examples of ROI acceleration that we're so delighted to hear from our customers. Now, customers also ask us, what's your vision for security? We have many competitors in our space that have done a student body right and said they're a cybersecurity company. Some others are still storage companies and don't have a vision for security. I've been in the security industry for 15 years. And you have to be authentic about how you approach security. Uh, and I've seen that from not just the companies I was involved in, VMware or SAP, or companies like Sneak that I'm on the board of. You have to be authentic and you have to have a team of people that advise you. Here's what we're doing in terms of our differentiated vision for security. Number one, we have built in security from the get-go into our platform. It's not bolted on, it's built in in many of the areas I've talked about already. And you're going to see that us taking a platform approach to building it in more and more into aspects of everything we do in the core platform. Our Cyber Vault product, which is typically where immutable backups and much of this air gap capability is the number one product in uh, in the market. Don't believe us, at, at VMworld, this product, Fortnox won the number one gold medal product, beating out all of the, the competition in its category. We've added now uh, threat hunting capabilities, not just what we will offer you out of the box, but we will also offer ways by which third party threat hunters can be fed into our platform for uh, threat intelligence and scanning. And a lot of what needs to be done in this data threat hunting and scanning is a lot like disease uh, prevention and testing, for, for example, COVID. You're constantly testing for COVID because you want to make sure you don't have some sleeper cell malware. It's just the same way in data threat hunting. You're testing your data before backup, after backup, before it's archived, maybe before it's vaulted, before it's put into that clean cyber vault that's air gapped. And those scanning algorithms need to be really, really powerful. We built that into the product when we also will allow you to leverage third party capabilities. Intelligent classification. Often this tended to be with legacy tools that only worked on-prem, didn't work in the cloud. We've modernized this and done this in a very smart fashion uh, with our partners like Big ID. You're going to see a lot of that now uh, kind of bringing together aspects of governance, risk, compliance uh, into aspects of data security. But we don't think we can do it all ourselves. We think the vision is an AI-automated security operations center, or a SOC. And we need to make sure that that AI-driven SOC gives us feeds so that we can then run our algorithms with an appropriate fashion. We might send feeds back to them, whether it's a Splunk or a Palo Alto or a CrowdStrike or a Microsoft Sentinel, whatever that security operations center is, we're going to see us tightly integrating into that. And that's what we are excited to announce uh, today. We're introducing the world's first data security alliance. For the first time in industry, we've gone and gotten the best companies in this category, whether it's Palo Alto, whether it's CrowdStrike, whether it's Tenable, Okta, Mandiant, now part of Google, Cisco has been partners with us, PwC, Splunk, Securonix, CyberArk, Big ID, Qualys, and many, many more to come. These are you know, hundreds of billions worth of market cap, if you want to count the big cloud players, a couple trillion all deciding they want to partner with Cohesity as their lead partner. But we're going to make this alliance open even to our competitors because we think all companies in that space, whether you're a partner or competitor, we should be joined at the hip to fight the bad guys. It's not just the technology partners. We also need sort of the doctors, if you would, who are the best in this industry. We announced Kevin Mandia uh, earlier uh, joining our board. I talked about him 
uh, Marion Bailey, who was in the NSA and CIA, Alex Stamos, uh, Sheila Jordan, Jason Chan, Laura Barrowman. These are folks who are world-renowned in security. And we're adding now a seventh player uh, that we announced today, Kelly Bissell, who is a corporate vice president and head of Microsoft Security is joining this. And he will partner with us, not just in his individual capacity, but also from Microsoft. We're looking forward to partnering with them. So these seven folks are here to serve you, our customers, our partners, as we all together, uh, you know, find the best defense mechanisms in the industry. So as you think about how we want to play this out with you, here are my three summary points um, that I would leave you with. Number one, you're going to see us innovating on product and being obsessed with customers forever. We think these two engines off the plane, so to speak, of Cohesity are the engines that are going to fuel us product innovation and customer obsession. Number two, we're going to create a differentiated vision and a platform for this junction of data security and management. We sell often to a CIO and CTO and a CISO. We're right in the middle of both of those, and we need to build a platform that's best at management and security. And I've seen this movie of being able to do two things at one time very well at VMware. We would often debate, is analytics a management topic? Is threat hunting a security topic? It, the answer is it's both. And we can't do it alone. It's very important that we create an ecosystem of the best and the brightest, both technology companies and also uh, personnel that come and help us fight the bad guys because it's going to take a village. Many of these nation state actors are just you know, playing a threat game like we've never seen before. Uh, and it's important that we assemble that village. We're going to do the hard work to bring that together, integrate deeply with them, and then bring that innovation to you. We'd encourage you, all of our customers, uh, to co-innovate with us. We want to see you driving future into our roadmap. We will innovate furiously, and you'll see also, also bringing the best partners into this equation. I'm excited about this category. Uh, this has been, in some senses, you know, a sleepy category with some folks not innovating, uh, with legacy players kind of moving through various different ownership structures. We believe as the fastest growing, we've been the fastest growing player in this market the last two years as ranked by IDC. We want to continue to do that in joint fashion with our customers and partners. And speaking of partners, I'm now going to segue to a, a partner panel where you're going to hear four great companies in security talk about how they are partnering with Cohesity and why they picked us as their partner they wanted to work with. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the rest of ReConnect. Hello, everyone. Sanjay Poonan, CEO of Cohesity here. I'm delighted to be here with some of my friends that I've known for many years in the security industry, the village of ecosystems that are fighting the bad guys. And uh, I just, it's a tremendous honor to explore over the course of the next several minutes, a little bit of their vision and how together this industry is working together to help uh, organizations, countries all be safe. So I'm delighted first to introduce Lee Clarich, who is the Chief Product Officer of Palo Alto Networks. I'm Olkul Kearney, who is the Chief Product Officer of CrowdStrike. Uh, Patrick Coughlin, who is the GVP of Splunk Security. And Ray Komar, who is the VP of Cloud and Technology at uh, Tenable. Uh, gentlemen, it's a joy to be with you today. I was just thinking as I got ready for this, there's probably collectively about 100 billion of market cap between these four great companies, respectively leaders in their uh, categories and growing, and probably well over 10 billion of revenue. So Lee, I'd like to talk to you. I've probably known you the longest among any of the four here, uh, and all the way from my days of VMware in Palo Alto. Um, you know, maybe talk a little bit about your vision uh, for security. What is Palo Alto trying to drive in the security industry? Yeah. Look, the, the security industry has, as many, many people know, has, has been a very fragmented industry over the years. Uh, you know, it's not uncommon to find an enterprise with hundreds of different security vendors that they're all trying to stitch together and somehow make work. And as, as we've grown as a company and looked at this problem, one of the clear learnings we've had is that as long as we're expecting our customers to try to figure out how to be the system integrator on 200 plus security products and tools, it's not going to work. And so a big piece of our vision has been taking what traditionally has been very disparate uh, product and security capabilities and bring them together in a platform-based approach where everything is pre-integrated and pre-designed to be able to work together. Not exclusive though, in terms of how that, how that works with the rest of their ecosystem, 
but where there's logical integration points, do that pre-integrated in the platform. Well, yeah, I think that's well said. I really respected the partnership we had at VMware. Wished we had, could have done more together there. Yes. Uh, that switched to Amol, and I would say, Amol, I am grateful. We try to compete with you. I'm really delighted I'm actually partnering with you now uh, from the standpoint of CrowdStrike. Maybe you can talk about, you guys have also done very well, like Palo Alto in your respective area. What's CrowdStrike's vision uh, for the security industry? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question and and a great point, Lee, on on having a platform approach. Um, uh, as you all know, CrowdStrike actually started with that vision uh, by building a single platform, uh, a, the whole product portfolio driven with a single agent and a single cloud that powers the security cloud. So that that's the vision, and totally agree with it. That's the approach we've taken is to build a platform. In fact, I, I came, I spent a lot of time at Microsoft and when I came to, started looking at the security space, that, that's one thing that, I, that struck me is that there wasn't really a, a broad platform approach. So first and foremost, that's, that's key. Uh, but, but as you know, CrowdStrike is focused on stopping the breach. And the idea there is to provide a comprehensive solution for workload security, identity security, and data protection using the single platform approach. Well, I'm hearing a lot about pat platform. I think that's well articulated. Patrick, let's talk about Splunk. You guys have you know, kind of started off with a developer viral almost. You know, Many CISOs started using them as a small tool, but then it grew that's over right. the years. You're the household name in many uh, socks. Uh, what's Splunk's uh, you know, perspective on uh, your security vision? Yeah, absolutely. So we see Splunk as the, the unified security and observability platform for our customers. And, and what that really means is we're seeing a convergence across security workflows, security data sources, IT workflows and data sources, and DevOps workflows and data sources. And our customers are looking at incidents through a lens that they can come from adverse conditions like failures in the infrastructure or an outage in a service or even a performance degradation in an app, or can come from a malicious compromise, from an external threat actor or an insider risk. And what our customers are asking us is, how quickly can you help me find it? How quickly can you help me fix it? And can you layer in some automation so that I don't have to do it again? And so at Splunk, every line of code that we write, every customer initiative that we instrument ought to roll up to impact in driving outcomes for our customers in those areas. Well, that's great. Uh, Ray, I'd like to kind of close this for the first part of it with you, uh, Tenable, you know, it's a, a, a company that went public recently. You've got a, a clear focus on more than just vulnerability management. Maybe you can talk a little bit about your vision for security. Yeah, and similar to uh, the other folks on the panel, we're very much focused on a platform approach as well. Uh, we started life, as you alluded to, as a vulnerability management company, went public uh, about three years ago. And we really uh, made a concerted effort to round out the ability for our customers to assess the different components of their tech stack or their attack service, whether it's traditional IT assets, cloud assets, operational technology assets, identity assets in the case of AD, and stitch that what we call proactive security view together into a common framework and a common visibility platform to prioritize and focus on the most critical risk to an organization's uh, exposure and, and cyber posture. Well, Ray, let me kind of go in reverse order a little bit and you know, you're in charge of partnerships. Why does it take a village to actually solve this? I mean, it's amazing to see the four of you here. I contacted each of you uh, when we got our schedules all sort of lined up, it was a delight. There's parts of overlap between you know, some of our portfolios, but uh, you know, when you come together, the village always wins. It takes a village to fight the bad guys. You know, you're in charge of partnerships uh, at Tenable. Uh, why is that approach important in the security industry? You know, I think everyone sitting here and most folks in the industry will recognize that none of us can solve the problem for our, for our customers or for, for security in general ourselves. We got to work together, as you say, as a village. Um, we're very focused on that at Tenable. It's a key part of our platform story. Uh, everybody here, I believe we partner with in some way, shape or form. Uh, and we have over 125 partnerships today, over 200 integrations. And I think it's key for everyone to get together and really help facilitate uh, the folks who are trying to protect those orgs and those nations from the folks who are trying to do bad stuff. Uh, maybe I'll start with you, Lee, and then ask the same question of Amol. What are some of the best practices you've seen of infrastructure teams and security teams working together to effectively get the best implementations of Palo Alto or Next Cloud Strike working? You know, from the very earliest days of health networks, looking at network security, 
you know, there's, there's really no company that chooses network security only in a security buyer or only as a network infrastructure buyer. They, they always have to collaborate. They always have to ultimately come to a joint decision to, to some extent. And the same is true in cloud security with Prisma Cloud and what we're doing there. And the same is true uh, in the SOC and endpoint security, et cetera. And what, what I have observed in all these cases, and first and foremost, we, we as the solution provider have a lot of responsibility in this. Our responsibility is to, is to build products that actually help solve problems for both of those constituents. It's incumbent upon us to do that. And we wake every, every day thinking about how we provide value to all decision makers that have to come together. Second is we proactively bring those teams together and help them. Sometimes we're the one connecting the dots for them and introducing them to each other, it's, it's as strange as that might sound. And then third, and, and why I accepted the invitation from you, thank you for, for that, was a big part of this is how we work with companies that are actually providing that infrastructure to our customers and how we partner with them and build products that, that integrate nicely with the different parts of the infrastructure that our customers are using. Because the more we can do together, the easier it becomes for our customers when they then choose to deploy our, our solutions together. Thanks, well said. Uh, we'll talk more about kind of the, the art of the possible between Cohesity and all of you. Let's talk about the synergies and why you feel a partnership between each of you and Cohesity is important to be able to protect the bad guys. Obviously with us doing what we do well uh, and then getting threat feeds or integration from your program. We've talked with each of you about what we are beginning, some of which we've already done and some we plan to do. Maybe I'll start with you, Lee. Uh, I think we, you were one of the first we started to integrate with and we've kind of started with XOR and other places. Why is this partnership important? You have a lot of people you could spend time with and partner and what are you excited about the potential between Palo Alto and Cohesity? Yeah, look, I, I love what Cohesity is doing and the recognition of what you can do in, in your position to also bring security elements to this. We uh, recently published uh, research on ransomware. So we've, in the last year, we've done about 600 uh, instant response engagements for ransomware. That's about seven per day. Wow. <laughs> Just to put that in, in, in context, um, or sorry, it was over the last, last uh, half year. The, the intelligence we learned from that is, is tremendous. And certainly there's a lot that we take away relative to what we could do to help prevent ransomware in the first place. But one of the other big takeaways is uh, understanding the cyber resilience of a company in the face of ransomware. And, and quite frankly, there's not nearly enough of it. <laughs> and so when we look at the partnership that we have with you, it's um, on the front end, how do we leverage the threat intelligence we have? How do we share it with you? How do we make it actionable um, from your point in the infrastructure? That's more on the, can we get better at detecting, preventing attacks? But then the second part of this is how do we, with, with XOR on the automation front, get better at the cyber resilience? Like what you do can be a tremendous asset in the cyber resilience and the recovery, speed of recovery of businesses to get back to actually doing business which is often overlooked when companies are setting up their security practice. Well said. Amol, your perspective, again, you have a lot of companies you could partner with, many people want to partner with, uh, with CrowdStrike. Uh, why did you feel this partnership was worth you, not just coming to this panel, but investing in, in a you know, go forward relationship between both our companies? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think uh, from, from a data security perspective, I mean, data is everywhere um, and it's, it's widely distributed. So I think just like with cloud security, I, I feel like data security is a shared responsibility model um, that, that we have to work together uh, with providers like you who are doing the core data management um, to have that telemetry exchange across us, right? What we see on the workload, what you see in the on the data storage side to, to weave together solutions, the scenarios that we talked about in terms of uh, restoring from backup, say, uh, or even notifying uh, notifications and detections when when certain anomalous things are happening on either end, uh, and and that's that's sort of the motivation we we built uh, Falcon XDR with uh, as a, as an open platform to integrate 
across various different security domains, across various different technologies. And, and data storage and data management is a, is a key one. Uh, and with, with your approach of being uh, cloud first, uh, being a, a data management platform, I think it aligns very well with how we've approached things to build out best of breed platform integrations. Uh, so I, I think it was it was really a no-brainer and super excited to see what we can do together. That's great, I'm looking forward to that. Patrick, nobody probably knows more about data than the amount of data you guys collect. Yeah. Uh, you've been more focused on the analytics and we're kind of now trying to make sure that all that data where it's coming from logs and it's secure. Uh, speak a little bit about why you felt the, uh, you know, the Splunk Cohesity partnership was also important for you to invest your time and in integration efforts with. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, one of the things that is always I've been a customer of Splunk at different points in my career, and now as a Splunk employee, one of the things that I've always resonated with is Splunk says very loudly and proudly that security is a data problem, and we hear our customers wrestling with this data problem from multiple different directions. Um, detection and response is one part of that problem, and, and we believe Splunk has a whole portfolio of products that really help step to that challenge to accelerate detection, give you more fidelity in your alerting, like our risk-based alerting capabilities, and to streamline response through uh, security orchestration and automated response, our SOAR product. Um, but there's the recovery side of this, which you know, our customers, especially in the wake of ransomware, are clamoring for more solutions and more capability in just overall data management. And if you look at the mandate of the CISO today, it tacks to the flow of data across the organization increasingly. And so it's really important at Splunk that we have strong integrations and strong partnerships with Cohesity and other vendors um, because of where you sit in the stack as it relates to the remediation and the recovery component of this, which is which is such a huge part of the equation. And, and working with, I'll just say, working with, with partners has been a, um, has been a big focus for Splunk in the last 18 months. We we launched our open cybersecurity schema framework, which some of the some of the partners here on the stage, I know Lee, you are sitting next nice. to you, <laughs> participated in that, which again is is really an acknowledgement that while 15 years ago customers wanted platforms because it brought you customization, well now customers want platforms because it drives integration. Mm -hmm. And and that's what's important in our relationship with Cohesity. Ray, um, thank you, Patrick. Ray, we I think we also like what we did with uh, Lee, we, were, we I think we started integrating with uh, Tenable well before I even joined, so that partnership is well established. Talk a little bit from your perspective of why the partnership, of course, is important to Tenable. Yeah, absolutely. So I think uh, the, the first thing, I think the term's been used a couple times, resiliency, right? We think we share that common mission uh, across security and, and data management of, of providing resiliency to our, to our customers, right, and to the world out there. Uh, you folks are a leader in data management. Uh, we've been working with you, as you alluded to, for a little bit over a couple of years now around uh, your CyberScan app that's available up on your marketplace that's powered by, by Tenable.io, which helps assess backups uh, for known vulnerabilities. The last thing anybody needs is in the case of an emergency break glass situation where you're trying to recover from a backup, right? Recover from backup is to introduce vulnerabilities into your production environment, right? So by partnering together with you, we provide value that you're assessing those backups. While the backups may be static, the vulnerability landscape isn't, right? So we very much focus on the proactive side of the problem and trying to ensure that the infrastructure components that are deployed are as free from known vulnerabilities and misconfigurations as possible to limit the risk on the proactive side of the equation to make recovery, um, you know, detection recovery easier. The last thing anybody needs, once again, is in a case of a recovery situation to introduce vulnerable conditions. So we're excited to work with you over the last couple of years and excited to continue the journey with you going forward. Thank you, Ray. And, and folks, that's how we view the world. I mean, our goal at Cohesity is to be a leading data security management platform uh, and in aspects of data security, whether it's cyber vaulting, threat hunting of data, which we'll do some ourselves, but often we're getting the feeds from these folks who are seeing a lot more, uh, you know, kind of vector of, of threat uh, or research as well as, you know, impact of what could help us in our scanning of that data. Um, to classification of data, to you know, integration into their SOCs, and we're going to get to the security operations centers of the future. Um, we think that when we're able to create this, we're calling the Data Security Alliance, where the best of breed companies in their categories can integrate, uh, and we do a lot of the work too, to integrate deep with Cohesity, the customer gets the benefit. Um, you know, I'd like to talk a little bit about that R word. I mean, the three R's I often get asked about are resilience, ransomware, and Russia. We won't talk about Russia, <laughs> but I'd like to talk about ransomware because that's like everyone's freaked out about it. 
people want to know should they pay the ransom, not pay. I don't want to get into the ethical aspects of it, but maybe any of you who want to start, uh, how are you advising your customers to best be prepared to both protect, but then maybe in some cases you have to recover because it is going to happen anyway? At Splunk, we do this state of security report every year where we survey a couple thousand customers and, and drive some insights and then publish it. One of the things we found is, is we saw a double digit acceleration in attacks across the board, business email compromise, uh, insider risk, but ransomware dwarfed them all. Uh, 73 dwarfed them all. Dwarfed them all. It was yeah. above everybody above else. Above everybody yeah. else. And it's, it's, it's not going away. 73% of the respondents um, said that they had been affected by a ransomware It was their number the one topic. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'll add one other dimension to this, which is we then went and um, our, our surge team, which is our, our threat research capabilities, um, went and looked at 100 different ransomware binaries and looked at the mean time to, to encrypt across these different binaries. And basically the mean time to encrypt MTTE was less than one hour. Mm. And so there's the volume challenge, but there's also a speed and an acceleration dimension that when we talk to customers about it, we, we say, look, the, the bad guys are focusing on how quickly can they encrypt. We need to be focused on how quickly can we detect, how quickly can we respond, and how quickly can we recover. And so we have to introduce speed alongside volume, and that's of course also where things like machine learning mm -hmm. and risk-based approaches to alerting will help us stay ahead of the bad guys. That's great. Amol or Ray, any further comments on the R word, ransomware? We absolutely need to make sure that um, the automation is being used by the SOC to really customize the software that you're using. And, and it's, we are living in a heterogeneous world, no matter what, uh, to customize the software that they are using to their policies, right? I think that's, that's the first thing. Second is uh, to make sure that backups are in place in case the, a breach happens, in case encryption happens. But also, honestly, in addition to that, there is also now the increase in lock and leak. Uh, so even if uh, the attackers cannot encrypt, as long as they are able to exfiltrate, they can essentially uh, leak uh, or, or threaten to leak. And, and that's, a, that's a significant damage that attackers can cause to the brand. So even if you can restore the data well, there is also the brand uh, protection that you need to be aware of. And, have to worry about, uh, and and our our uh, uh, advice is is very is is generic but simple. Is first is simplify the security stack. The more complexity you have, the the worse you are going to have in terms of effectiveness of your security. Uh, second is leverage the products that you have to their fullest. Um, we find so many people with configurations not enabled uh, just because of change management and, and the velocity of change management. So use it, don't do half measures. Uh, and, and then third is just reduce, improve hygiene, reduce the attack surface as much as possible. Well, listen folks, I think if you listen to the last, um, you know, this whole segment, I took away three takeaways. One is um, all of you should be looking at platforms, not point products. I think that was very much reiterated through the story of all four of these great companies and their success. Uh, they started off perhaps as point products in the segment, but they've built platforms successfully. That's certainly our vision at Cohesity. A number of them talked about cyber hygiene and elements of just basic things that every one of you as either IT or security professionals should be doing. Um, and I'd encourage you to follow it, whether it's multi-factor authentication, encryption, uh, you know, all of the kinds of you know, seg micro-segmentation, all the kind of key things that are very low-hanging fruit to get done. And then everyone talked about this combination of data and observability and uh, AI-powered things with, you know, some human moderation, but the AI and the data is really going to be what takes us into a place where much like uh, you know, fighting disease or fighting the bad guys in the military perspective. The more data you have, the more secure you are, the more safe we are, the more healthier we are. So I'm just grateful to have uh, all four of these great companies here. Uh, we at Cohesity have a vision that the, the ecosystem village is what ultimately wins. Again, the bad guys, nation state actors, and many more. And we're going to do our part as a data security alliance to bring the best in each category. Uh, and it's open to everybody. We're also doing this to include even our competitors uh, to play in the data security alliance so that for our part of what we do, which is the collection of mass amount of data in the petabytes and exabytes of data, we can make sure that it's secure um, and it's you know, uh, hopefully in a place where if, even if you do get hit by ransomware, it can be recovered extremely fast.
So thank you all, uh, gentlemen, for being here. I look forward to our partnership flourishing for uh, months and quarters and years to come. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank Thanks, you. Sanjay.